In a previous video, we talked about the systemic anatomy. Systemic anatomy is a term used to describe the study of the body systems as opposed to something like regional anatomy, where we take a look at one specific area. So systemic anatomy, we're looking at body systems. This video is about those different body systems. Now, before you skim over the video, please realize that what I'm going to tell you in this video are answers to an exam, specifically your first exam. If your anatomy and physiology professor is like every other anatomy and physiology professor I've ever met, including myself, you will have questions on what we're about to cover. So pay attention. Anyhow, we're gonna break the body down into 11 separate systems. Your course, your textbook, your professor might break these down a little bit differently. In the end, it doesn't really matter because you're gonna know it anyways. You're gonna know the organs and their functions regardless. So let's get going. We have the integumentary system, the skeletal system, the muscular system, the nervous system, the endocrine system, the cardiovascular system, the lymphatic system, the respiratory system, the urinary system, the digestive system, and the reproductive system. We keep the best for last, what can we say? These are the 11 systems that you need to be aware of. Let's go into each of these in a little bit more detail. You again need to know the organs that are part of this as well as their general functions. We begin with the integumentary system. The integumentary system is composed of skin, hair, nails, and glands. Its function is to help regulate the body's temperature, protection, water volume control, eliminates some waste products, vitamin D production, and sensation. The skeletal system is composed of the bones, the joints, and the cartilage. In my lessons, I break those into two separate lessons, the skeletal system and the joints and articulations. The function of the skeletal system is protection and blood production. The next system is the muscular system. That's composed of three separate muscle tissues, the skeletal muscle tissue, the cardiac, and the smooth. When you're in this muscular system, you typically take a look at the skeletal muscle tissue. The cardiovascular, excuse me, the cardiac muscle and the smooth muscle tissue are handled separately. For example, the cardiac muscle is typically covered in the cardiovascular system, while the smooth muscle can be covered in the cardiovascular system, as well as the digestive system and some other systems. The function of the muscular system is to do movement, posture, and heat production. Continuing on, we have the nervous system. The nervous system is broken down into two sections. You have the central nervous system, otherwise known as the CNS, which is composed of the brain and the spinal cord. Then you have the peripheral nervous system, or PNS, don't say that fast together, which is composed of the spinal nerves, the nerves that are coming off of the spinal cord, as well as nerves that are coming off the brain. Its job is to regulate body activities. The endocrine system, which is our next one, also regulates body activities, just not as quick as the nervous system, but it is very powerful. The endocrine system is composed of hormone producing glands, such as the pituitary gland, the thyroid gland, the parathyroid gland, and the adrenal gland. The cardiovascular system, this is again another system that's typically broken up into two separate lessons, the lessons that cover the heart and the lessons that cover the blood vessels and the blood, or some variation of that. The cardiovascular system is composed of the blood, the heart, and the blood vessels. Its job is to do transport. It transports oxygen, it transports carbon dioxide, it transports things. It's the UPS of the body. The next section, the next body system, is the lymphatic system. The lymphatic system is composed of the lymph, the lymphatic vessels, and the lymphatic tissues. Its job is to bring fluid back into the blood as well as protection. Now, before we continue, the lymphatic system is probably one of the most misunderstood systems in the body for anatomy physiology students. When I was in my undergrad taking this for the very first time, 
our professor described it as the drip pan of the car, which is great if you know what the drip pan of a car was, which I didn't, and having to look up an analogy to understand what the analogy is about is usually not good. So here's how I describe it to my students, and I use my wife as an example. She loves me using her as an example. Anyhow, if you've ever heard of edema, or actually, you know what, let's, let's back this up for a second. If you've ever seen a woman who is pregnant, and if you've ever looked at their legs, their legs can be a little swollen, especially as they, they move forward in the pregnancy. Uh, teachers can have this, hairdressers, people who stand on their legs long period of time can get edema. Edema is a buildup of fluid. Well, where does the fluid come from? Okay. The fluid is a normal part of the body. Okay, you have intracellular fluid, extracellular fluid, you have fluid inside the bloodstream, all of the fluid. We are a great deal of fluid. We need to keep it moving though. And the lymphatic system is kind of like a straw, a big straw that you put in the marshland because that's the rest of our body. It's one big marshland, okay? Lots of fluid around a lot of stuff. And the lymphatic system is this big straw that sounds wonderful, by the way, in the video, sucks up the fluid. It pulls the fluid back into the bloodstream. It pulls it into the lymphatic system. The lymphatic system will clean it to make sure it's nice and clean. It didn't get any alligators from the marsh or anything icky, and it'll dump it back into the bloodstream. So back to my wife and pitting edema, or edema. When my wife was pregnant with our first son, her legs got to be pretty swollen. And I had read about pitting edema when I was in professional school, but I'd never actually seen it. Well, here's my wife. Okay, we're in the hospital and, and we're fixing to give birth to our first son and uh, her legs are really swollen. And I'm like, oh, I wonder. Mm. So I very casually kind of put my finger on her leg and rubbing her leg and like, oh honey, I love you, I love you, I love you. And I, I push my finger in on her leg and I remove it, and whoa, that was cool. There was an indentation where I had pushed my finger, I didn't hurt, but I pushed my finger in, and I took my finger out, and there was an indentation in her leg. I'm like, pitting edema, this is so neat. Well, my wife has a kinesiology degree, so she kind of, you know, hangs with me on some of the cool stuff, you know, like, yeah, well, that is kind of cool. I'm like, yeah, look, look, pitting edema. She's like, oh, yeah, that is pitting. Oh, da, da, da. So, um, she kind of drew the line as I was pushing here and then pushing here, and then I went for the smiley face. Uh, she said, I'll kill you, and I, I quickly stopped. So, but that's pitting edema. What happened there was there was a buildup of fluid in the leg. It wasn't being sucked back fast enough or as efficiently as it should have been, and so there was a buildup of fluid in that area, in her legs. When you get to the cardiovascular system and you start to take a look at the, the, the veins and how the, the muscle contractions move the fluid back to where it should be, you'll understand that in much more detail. Now, again, learn from my lesson. Gentlemen out there, learn from my lesson. Uh, when your wife is pregnant and her legs are having edema, you might get away with pushing on them once to go, hey, pitting edema, but don't, don't go for the smiley face. No, it's not a good idea. Anyways, let's move on, shall we? The respiratory system. The respiratory system is composed of the lungs and the accessory organs. Its function is to transport gas. It brings in rich air or air rich in oxygen, we hope, and expels carbon dioxide. Oversimplification, we'll go into that in more detail in the respiratory system. The urinary system. The urinary system is composed of the kidneys, the ureter, and the bladder. Its job is to regulate chemical composition of the blood. That's what it's there for. It's there to regulate the chemical composition of the blood. Really kind of cool stuff, by the way. And we have the digestive system and the reproductive system. The digestive system is composed of the gastrointestinal tract or the GI tract, as well as accessory structures. So your teeth, your tongue, those are accessory structures. They help the overall function. Its job is to break down and absorb useful substance from the food. And finally, we have the reproductive system. The reproductive system is composed of the testes, the ovaries, the uterine tubes, the uterus, the epididymis. Its job is the continuation of the species. And by the way, that is a picture of my youngest son on that slide there. 